Coming up on the Q30 newscast, freshman student government elections may be over, but there's one thing that still has some students talking. We'll have that story coming up. And it's restaurant week here in Hamden. We'll have where you can get the best deals around. Plus, flu season is coming. How you can prevent yourself from getting sick. All this and more coming up on your Q30 newscast. Live from the Ed McMahon Center, this is the Q30 News Nightcast. The Q30 Newscast. I'm Sarah Fidel. And I'm Matthew Stefano. Last week, you watched the Q30 Newscast's exclusive interview with freshmen Sal Neshi Jr. and Ryan Lynch, moments after finding out they were both elected to the freshman cabinet of student government. This week, the Quinnipiac community is still focusing on the student government, but for a different reason. Our own Taylor Poplars has the latest. We have the balls to represent you. That was a campaign ad created by two freshman candidates who were running for class office at Quinnipiac University. The ad was posted on Facebook and found its way onto Twitter, but was never printed or hung up around campus. And though freshman student government elections have ended, the ad is still causing reactions. Although it might be an innocent joke on Facebook, you are perpetuating one of the greatest social problems of our time. Senior Lexi Gruber is one of the students upset by the ad, specifically by its phrasing. It's inherently sexist. She says she wanted the university to disqualify the candidates in the ad from running. If they made the joke that I have the skin color to represent you, which again would be a joke about the political times that we live in, would that be the same innocence? Would it be the same kind of humor? Of course not. Student government president Mustafa El Hagar says the election committee was made aware of backlash against the ad and that committee members instructed the candidates to take the ad down upon receiving complaints. We're not here to upset or uh, negatively affect anyone in our community. We're all one team here at Quinnipiac. In an exclusive interview with Q30, El Hagar says the ad was intended to be a joke, but that he could see why it was viewed as offensive. He also says student government is going to look into campaigning policies, specifically social media policies, because currently... There is no social media policy put in place. No, Correct. there's not. No. According to El Hagar, once feelings are hurt, then action takes place. With the campaign, uh, it's free game until it hurts someone. And if it does, then, then you know, sh that's what we do. We review it and we take care of it. And, and that's what we did. Civil litigation attorney and Quinnipiac media law professor Terry Carigliano says a social media policy for campaigning is necessary, even on the collegiate level. The, the damage could be greater if it goes out on social media, you know, within seconds, obviously, than just a poster hung up, you know, on a wall somewhere. The university is taking this huge approach to diversity, especially when it comes to women, with the issues that we've had with the Title IX. And a student leader goes against that exact mission and, and satirizes it. Then I don't think that you are able to represent this university. That's something that we're going to look at for sure uh, in this upcoming semester, but it's really up to the organization in its entirety. So I think it really needs to be, it needs to be looked at as far as the campaigning process goes, as far as what is Except on social media and what isn't. Taylor Popolars, Q30 News. For those who missed our broadcast last week, Ryan Lynch, one of the students pictured in the controversial ad, was elected to the vice president position for the freshman class, and he is currently serving in office. Back to the desk. A candlelight vigil was held this evening on the quad as a symbol of solidarity with persecuted Christians in the Middle East. Quinnipiac's Catholic chaplain, Reverend Jordan Lenahan, led the vigil to show the community support. It was very interesting. I've never seen so many different types of cultures and religions, especially around Hamden, New Haven, Coptics, uh, Syrians, and Greeks. As tensions in the Middle East continue to rise, religious minorities are being targeted by Islamic State militants. With flu season quickly approaching, Quinnipiac is offering free flu shots to all students and faculty members. Health services will be holding these flu clinics on the North Haven campus on October 8th and 9th and November 6th, on the Mount Carmel campus on October 15th and 16th and November 4th, and on the York Hill campus on October 21st and 22nd. The vaccines will only be available while the supplies last. This week, you might want to check out some restaurants in Hamden that are offering some great deals on your favorite foods. Tom Albanese has more on this week-long event. It's an event that occurs in many towns around Connecticut. These signs have arrived, showing that this week is Hamden Restaurant Week. 
16 restaurants are participating, and several owners and general managers, including Scott Scalabrino, are excited to get started. Hamden Restaurant Week's a, a good event for us. It brings in customers from not only Hamden, um, that maybe want to sample or try some something that's on the menu that they haven't had before. In order to bring in new customers from other towns, Hamden restaurants, including Eli's, B&D Deli Works, Mickey's Restaurant, and Aunt Chilada's, are offering different kinds of food for customers to show what Hamden is all about. We offer lots and lots of choices. So it's three courses we offer. It's an appetizer, choice of a soup and a salad, and an entree. Along with providing many choices from their original and new menus for the week, these restaurants are also having special deals to give their customers a happy experience. We are the $12 lunch and the $24 dinner. We have the lunch combo that we're going to try to do along with everyone else um, for the $12 price. I think we're going to do a drink special, like $5 martinis for the, for the dinner menu, so that'll be nice. Hamden residents, including Cynthia McFarland, Farland appreciate how this week brings the town together. I like it. It brings people together. It gives us more of an opportunity to taste, sample different different varieties of food. The restaurant owners are looking to make this year's event better than last year, and they are excited to be busy for business. It's just extremely busy, very, very busy, um, busier than we've ever been. That's always restaurant week is our busiest week and everyone's happy and there's lots of energy and it's a good time. Reporting for Q30 News, I'm Tom Albanese. The stage is set for Quinnipiac's upcoming productions. Theater for Community will present four productions as part of the 2014-2015 main stage season. The season will open October 16th with the musical Nine. It will be followed by the comedy Arms and the Man and the season will close with 1918 in April. Theater for Community will partner with Abington Theater Company again this year for the 2015 New Play Festival in February. Students will have the opportunity to perform and write original plays to be performed in New York City as part of the festival. Still to come on the Q30 newscast, a home invasion that has left a Hamden woman traumatized, what police say happened, and the search for the alleged attacker. And the suspicious activity that sent one Southington school into lockdown. Stay with Q30 to find out the latest. And with the first official day of fall coming up next Tuesday, sweater weather is fast approaching. Stay with us for your Q30 fo forecast after the break. Wake up, Quinnipiac! It's the morning after! Hey! Come on, guys, it's time for TMA! Let's go! The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. And we have a very back to his Hollywood. This is my mom. <laughs> 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 I'm I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. The home of a 26-year-old woman at Saramont Apartments was broken into while she was sleeping. According to police, the woman was tied up and her attacker demanded her car, electronics, and debit card with the correct PIN number. Police say the woman was not physically harmed. Hamden police are still investigating. The Center for Disease Control confirmed Wednesday a case of the enterovirus D68 infection in Connecticut. According to a Yale New Haven Hospital spokesperson, the child was treated and the child's condition improved and was discharged. The Department of Health released a statement saying the virus is likely causing respiratory illness in Connecticut because of this confirmed case and suspected cases across the state. 
From the spreading Ebola virus to the threats made by ISIS, political leaders around the globe are deciding what actions to take next. For updates on what's happening around the world, let's turn now to Q30's AO with World News. <laughs> announced it will need more than $1 billion to fight the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. The World Health Organization says Ebola has infected nearly 5,000 people and has killed over 2,400. President Barack Obama announced plans to send 3,000 U.S. troops to Liberia. The troops will assist in training thousands of health care workers and will help oversee the 17 treatment centers that will be built. United States General Martin Dempsey says U.S. combat forces should be used against ISIS if the current airstrike strategy fails. Dempsey says this to Congress on Tuesday, but still expressed his confidence in the coalition formed between the U.S. and other governments to stop ISIS. British Prime Minister David Cameron promised to destroy ISIS after British worker David Haynes was beheaded last week. Haynes was the third hostage beheaded by the militant group. Ukraine's president signed a landmark agreement on political association and trade with the European Union. Members of parliament granted self-rule to two parts of the eastern region and an amnesty to pro-Russian rebels. UN officials say at least 3,000 people have been killed in the conflict and more than 300,000 people have been internally displaced in Ukraine. Police are searching for the killers responsible for the death of two British tourists in Thailand. The bodies were found on a beach in Koh Tao. Authorities say they believe the culprits may still be on the island. Thai police are monitoring departures from the popular resort island. That's all for your World News. I'm Aya Galal. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Aya. Still to come, the latest in entertainment news. All this and more when the Q30 newscast returns. Wake up, Quinnipiac. It's the morning after. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. And we have a very back to his Hollywood. This is my mom. <laughs> 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 I'm I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney, here at Ray and Mike's. I'm Janelle Cadigan here with your full Q30 weather forecast. Over in Los Angeles, it's going to be is 82 degrees today. Down in San Antonio, it's 88 degrees. However, up in the Northeast, it was 68 in New York and 63 in Boston. Now let's take a look at the radar. As you can see, it's extremely clear up in the New England area. There's some rain down to our south, but it's not going to affect us at all. Now let's take a look at the local weather. <laughs> Over in Hartford, it's 72 degrees. Stores is a little more chilly, 68 degrees. Down in New Haven, 71 degrees near the coast. And over in Waterbury, 72 as well as in Meriden. Now let's take a look at tonight's weather. Tonight is gonna be 49 degrees, a little chilly, or very chilly, and clear, with winds west-southwest at five miles per hour. And tomorrow, 
is going to be 74 degrees, nice and warm, sunny, with winds northwest at 8 miles per hour. Now let's take a look at the seven-day forecast. Thursday, tomorrow, again, is going to be 74 degrees and sunny, as well as Friday. Saturday and Sunday is going to be um, cloudy, 73 degrees and 81 degrees on Sunday to warm up. Monday, there's going to be a chance of showers, 76 degrees. And then we're going to cool off Tuesday and Wednesday, 70 degrees and 69 degrees. Now back to the desk. There were some blurred lines for one recording artist. And some surprise celebrity announcements. For everything entertainment news, we're going to go to Dora. Is Blue Ivy going to be a big sister? During Beyonce and Jay-Z's On The Run tour, Jay-Z changed the lyric in Beach Is Better from I replaced with another one to she's pregnant with another one. But the pregnancy rumors are questionable after Life and Times tweeted a picture of the couple drinking champagne to celebrate finishing up their On The Run tour in Paris. Lauren Conrad is a married woman. The fashion designer married longtime boyfriend William Tell in California this past weekend. Many congratulated the former reality star on her nuptials including a congratulatory tweet from her alleged frenemy, Heidi Montag. Conrad wore a custom Badgley Mishka gown with a 10-foot train. Conrad and Tell got engaged last October. Robin Thicke reveals he was high when he recorded his hit song, Bird Lines. This confession, confession comes as Thicke is undergoing a lawsuit for, the, for that song. 30, the 37-year-old artist is undergoing a lawsuit with Marvin Gaye's family over his hit song, Blurred Lines. According to Gaye's estate, the bass line of Blurred Lines is strikingly similar to Marvin Gaye's song, Gotta Give It Up. During his testimony, Thicke said that he was high on Vicodine and alcohol while recording. Thicke claims that this confession is what caused the separation with his wife, Paula Patton. And Ryan Gosling is now a father. Eva Mendez gave birth to a baby girl on Friday. The couple has kept their entire relationship out of the press as much as possible. When Mendez appeared on the Ellen DeGeneres show in February, she said that rumors of her pregnancy were ridiculous. The couple met three years ago while filming The Place Beyond the Pines. That's all for your entertainment. I'm Dora Labatt. Now back to the desk. One Quinnipiac student is making their mark as the first male member of a group on campus. We'll have an exclusive look after the break. And we'll find out the latest in the world of Quinnipiac sports. We'll be right back with your Q30 newscast. Wake up, Quinnipiac! It's the morning after! The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. And we have a very back to his Hollywood. Day. This is my mom. Make a decision. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney, here at Ray and Mike's. Welcome back to the Q30 newscast. We have more here to tell us what's been happening with Quinnipiac Sports. Thanks, guys. It was 704 minutes and 46 seconds of game action since the women's soccer team last scored a goal. That's right, 704 minutes and 46 seconds. After a drought that lasted as long as the, the entire Rocky Balboa series, the team finally scored as sophomore striker Jessica Fontaine found the back of the net 
in the 66th minute in Saturday's game against Vermont here at the QU soccer field. Coincidentally, Fontaine was the last goal scorer for the Bobcats back on October 23, 2013 against Manhattan in which they won 1-0. But Fontaine's goal was all the Bobcats would need on Saturday to prevail over the Catamounts 1-0. The team takes their 1-4 record south to Philadelphia, where they are back in action Friday night against A-10 foe St. Joseph's. Game time is set for 7 p.m. Becca Main squad continued their season yesterday in a non-conference tilt against the visiting UMass Lowell Riverhawks, another team to add to their rather difficult non-conference schedule. Let's get right to the action. It's UMass, Lowell, it's Quinnipiac, and Yale, rather. Uh, at Yale in the first half, it will be the Bobcats on the attack. Uh, they will have a chance from the top of the key, no good as Yale with the save. Again, Quinnipiac on the attack. Their shot will be saved by the Bulldogs goalie, unable to score 0-0 at half, heading into the second half. Bobcats again with another chance, dominating in all offensive aspects of the game. The tap goes wide for the Bobcats. Still at 0-0 and then Megan Conaboy, the 2013 Mac Goalkeeper of the Year, comes up big for her Bobcats with a great save and uh, the Bulldogs will put one in on net again uh, and it was the Bobcats who cleared the ball. The Bulldogs though in overtime would have the last laugh as they put one at home, going to go on to fall to one and four overall. The team suits up again on Sunday at one o'clock as they travel to Burlington for a non-conference matchup with the University of Vermont. The uh, men's soccer team just went final as uh, their game against Holy Cross uh, just went just went final. They lost two to one. The Bobcats fell to one four and one on the season. The lone goal coming from Tanner Job. If you're around QU for the weekend, you can catch three teams in action on Saturday. Quinnipiac women's volleyball opens its 2014 max schedule against Manhattan at 1 p.m. Last season, the volleyball team lost two close matches to the Jaspers. Women's ice hockey will take on the Chinese national team in an exhibition game at 2 p.m. at High Point Solutions Arena while the men's soccer team will face Columbia at 3 p.m. on the QU soccer field. The visiting Lions own a 2-1 record with wins against the University of Michigan and Long Island University of Brooklyn. On Sunday, the volleyball team will face Iona at 1 p.m. For more information about Quinnipiac Sports, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook at Q30 Sports. And don't forget to check out the website at Q30Television.com. Another one of Quinnipiac's teams is in the news this week. Dance Fusion is making this year interesting and not missing a beat. Our very own Stephanie Fasano brings you the latest on a unique new member. Quinnipiac Dance Fusion wanted to spice things up for their team this year, and new member Aaron King is doing just that. I think being the first male on the team will change the, the dynamic of the team because more so they might center me in the middle because I am the only male. We want to see what we could do to take it to the next level and something we've never done and adding a boy is just that. Encouragement from the other dancers pushed King to try out. And then we had a uh, social with my fraternity and Dance Fusion. So then we came together and they saw that I could dance and they were like, hmm, maybe you should join. So it was always a constant like, all right, you should do it. And then in my head, I was like, do I really want to be the first guy to do this? Do I want to be the only guy to do this? And then after a while, I was like, it's senior year. I might as well go for it. We talked about it right after tryouts. We kind of told Aaron, like, this is something we weren't prepared to do. And we decided this could be like the thing that like we do as captains to like make an impact on Dance Fusion and he's like the perfect fit. Veterans on Dance Fusion agree that King meshes in just like any other new member. Our team is pretty open to all types of people and personalities, so he just is like fitting in with the rest of us. He just jumps right in, he learns choreography just like everyone else. It was more so like trying to get acclimated with like 
making sure that I get all the dance moves and I like work it to like the point where like the girls are working it. He knows his hard work will help them prepare for Bobcat Madness. For me bringing to the table, I think I have like very like cool ideas and quirky like things they can do in the middle of the dances. So like we'll see how that works out. But I think that it was gonna be a very, very interesting and like fun year with them. So I'm excited. I'm Stephanie Fasano, Q30 News. And that'll do it for this week's edition of the Q30 Newscast. Stay connected with Q30 throughout the rest of the week by visiting our Facebook page and following us on Twitter at Q30 News. And be on the lookout for a new Q30 News Department project, the Q30 News Weekly Digest, which is set to premiere this Friday. Thank you for watching and have a good night.